It started with Bob Marley. Um, I was in my last year at school and I'd read that Bob was coming over to do a tour of England. And so I decided that um, I wanted to photograph him. I knew I wanted to be a photographer. So that day I didn't go to, to school. I um, went to the Speakeasy Club in, um, in Soho and waited and waited. I got there maybe about nine o'clock in the morning and I think they turned about three o'clock. I just stood there, waited, waited. And as they were walking up the street towards me, as walked, you know, came up to me, I said to Bob, I said, could I take a picture? He said, yeah, man, come in. So I went in with him and I started taking pictures while they're doing the sound check. He was quite fascinated with me and asked me what it was like to be a young black kid, you know, in England. And I was asking, asking him about Jamaica. And then he eventually he told me about um, the tour and he said, if I'd like to come along, and I said, yeah. So next day, I packed the bag as if I'm doing sports at school, went to the hotel and uh, jumped in the van. There's a very famous picture where he's looking back at me saying, you ready, then? So I went, yeah. With the Sex Pistols, the journey of the Sex Pistols was chaotic. It was madness. My influence was reportage. So the way I photographed the band was more like a, a documentation in that sense. So it was never really just like straight up pictures of them against the wall. I really photographed them as people in that way. So I think when people, you know, young people and people that were there, what they see is them as people. They can see them as a way of life as such. Like I would say, I always say to young people, you know, for me, punk was never a, a fashion. It was a state of mind, a way of thinking in, in, in your heart in that sense. The whole punk movement was really about expression, about ex expressing yourself, breaking down the barriers to get to where you want to get. I think when people look at the installation behind me, I think they, everyone's heard a rock and roll story of a band throwing TVs through the windows, whatever. Well, this is proof of what really rock and roll can be like you know, in, in moments of depression and uh, drunkenness. And, Basically what happened there was um, one night Sid um, got completely depressed for whatever reason and got completely drunk and took his usual amount of drugs and my room was next to his and um, I just kept hearing all this commotion and then when it stopped I just got up, took, got my camera, pushed the door, walked in and thought wow and just basically just click, click, click was all around the room. And then, you know, this is proof of what uh, rock and roll can be like. Well, the soundscape really is trying to uh, recreate the, the mayhem that, that I heard in, in my room next to him. I think it's a, it's a very true um, reaction of, of, of what went, went on. There was a lot of crashing and smashing. And if you look at the TV, I mean, you can, can you imagine the amount of rage you must have had to take the TV off the, off the wall and completely smash it. The lasting impact of the Sex Pistols, sex pistols on me is basically that um, I am here as such. Um, punk, reggae, Bob Marley in particular gave me uh, a vision, an ideology, a way of pursuing my goal as such. What I got from Bob Marley was I learned how to keep myself grounded. I learned about spirituality. I learned about my history as a black person. What I learned from, about, from punk, what I got from punk, was how to kick the door down to get what you want. It's about resisting what the system wants to put in front of you. You have to push back, you have to kick back. And if you can do that and have enough uh, confidence in yourself and believe in yourself, you will achieve it.